Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to today's Art Rage painting. My name is Brett Tadlock, or TN Artist. Today we're going to discuss how to paint clouds and special effects like sun rays and rainbows and such. This is a full three-part workshop and I hope you enjoy it and we'll paint along and share it with others. By the way, if you don't have an uh, Art Rage itself, there is an affiliate link below to a fully functional demo version. It allows you to use everything and do everything except save and print your artwork. You'll be able to take it for a full test drive and I think that's pretty cool. So remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's get started with today's painting lesson. Okay, so let's discuss clouds. So what I have here again is just the standard canvas that opens up in ArtRage. I haven't changed anything. Um, I've actually got it lower resolution right now. So that way, uh, when I record sometimes, it, it makes my computer lag because it's processing so much stuff. So uh, I don't have it uh, at a high resolution right now because I don't want to put that strain on my system so I can make sure and record this. But again, uh, I'm not really worried about making prints where uh, worried about doing stuff. So what I've done here is I've on the fill button here, which you can get by uh, fill tool. You can get to by just hitting F on your system and it'll get you here. Then I chose a neutral bluish gray and just did that there. So that way it's just giving me a, a color to work from so I can see lights and darks and so forth. So I have a couple different layers set up here. There's nothing on these layers. Okay. Uh, they're just blank layers that I just went ahead and did one, two, three. And mainly because I want to have a background layer here. This is this one to give me my color and I'm going to go to the next one. So I want to show you a couple different ways to do clouds and some of these work better for some people. Some of them don't. And, but it'll give you a couple different ways to do it. And some of them, uh, starting with the ones that I started with first and then showing you a couple different variations. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down to my paint tube and select it. It is about 17%. Doesn't really matter what percentage it is. It's just kind of going for a tube of paint. So sticking with this bluish gray color over here, we're going to make some clouds. And what I'm going to do is just grab a little bit darker color little less saturation so as i go this way across i'm getting my values so value is light to dark and then as i go this way i'm getting my hue and that's the amount of saturation color all the way to pure blue down to a bluish gray so i'm really kind of you know playing around with that i also have mine set up to where i have the opposite colors here you know so that way if i see if i select this blue that's my complementary color right here that i could select not really super important for this, but I just wanted to give you that quick uh, overview. So I'm grabbing a, a darker gray, uh, but not a super dark one, but a darker gray. And I'm just going to literally scribble in some blobs. Okay. There is not a whole lot of thought going into this part of it, but you can, if you're designing certain clouds, like say you're looking at a picture of clouds that you took or something like that, you can kind of roughly shape in where the dark side would be and then where the highlights would be and so forth. So that's kind of what I'm doing here, but I'm not, because I'm just making this up as I go, I'm not really uh, bothering with a, an overall look uh, shape. So, all right, so now I've got here, so I'm gonna go a little bit lighter and select just a slightly lighter color. So I went up and over a little bit to a little bit brighter. I'm going to use this again, just kind of dabbing in where I think it should go. And then I'm going to go to a really light color, not white, but a really light color like so. And this again, just kind of thinking where I want the highlights to be. Okay. So, wow, look, it's clouds. Okay. <laughs> so not really going to the palette knife. I'm going to go with heavy blurred frosting. This is my go-to palette knife for clouds. This works fantastic for doing them. Uh, mainly just because these other ones, they throw in textures I don't like for a cloud. Now they work great for other stuff, but not for clouds for me. So that's what I'm going with heavy blurred frosting. Okay. And I've got the size set to hundred percent here. The main thing to know with the palette knives is that sometimes they work better the larger they are, they blend better. And you just have to pay attention to where the edge, of the blending is going to occur. 
and 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 that'll affect stuff with this but if you get something you don't like control z just undo it and then start again so starting at the bottom of the clouds of this paint globs to make the clouds i'm going to start in circular motions like this okay and i'm just going to flatten this paint out all right so you can see how i'm flattening it out i'm kind of avoiding the one above it at the moment but then i'm going to keep doing the circular motion and work my way up and what I'll do is, you'll see where I start hitting the lighter color. I'm going to let it create my edge of the cloud and not uh, blend that out, okay? Because that's what I want. So just circling around, circular motion, picking up some color. So if I hit that light, I went down and around it because I want to kind of leave it. Because otherwise you will obliterate it. Here, let me show you. See, it's gone. All right. And I may go back and blend. I'm not going to worry about it. So just blending this up and around and around like so and you see how I've got that white edge there it's hitting it I'm just trying to get that clump of paint to go away and then live leaving that edge like so now the the lighter color I had here kind of went away but you can see a little bit of it right there and a little bit right there where it kind of stayed but now I've got these rolling clouds it's important to leave that edge along right there so that you get that crisp stop okay so do it again over here blending from the bottom coming up hitting the light part letting it kind of break up and then leaving it alone Just circling. All right. So there we go. You know, we have, and then you can go along the bottom here and just kind of make this swooping kind of motion. And that will kind of give it the um, softness. So now I have, you know, and I could even combine these clouds, kind of bring them towards each other a little bit which could be interesting. All right. I now have the base for my clouds. Okay. You could even stop there with these clouds if that's what you wanted. Um, it's up to you. So what I'm going to do now is very light pressure because I'm using my Huion tablet and just very light pressure. I'm going to kind of make this motion and come up and just kind of quote unquote fluff the clouds. And it's just going to give that a little bit of movement and kind of soften down some of this stuff. Hit this one a little bit more. Okay. All right. I've got clouds. Okay. So let's say, for example, I want to add a little highlight to these clouds because I mean, you know, these look, these work fine, but they're not very dynamic. Um, they the shadow can be pushed more and the highlight can be pushed more. So I'm going to go to my next layer because I don't want to affect this layer. That layer two, I want to just do layer three so I can add highlights. And then if I don't like it, I can undo it and not have it smear into these clouds as well. So let's go across the, the color wheel here to kind of an orangish color. Now it's still going to stay in that whitish area. Okay. So if I leave it there, I could use that for highlights. I could actually go a little bit softer into the, the peachy color, the orangish peachy color right there and go with that, which I probably will. But right now I want to think about, uh, my shadows and stuff. So I could come here for the highlights. I could go over here even to my purples and then come way down here. So I have, just a little bit of purple, this kind of uh, grayish purple kind of color, go a little bit more, and then I've got that. So let me grab the paint tube again and think about, now this is where you want to think about how is the light coming in? Where do I want darkness? You know, so my light's going to be you know, coming from the upper left. And we'll do that. Now, one thing with this, when you use the paint tube, Art Rage thinks you're putting down a lot of paint. So this paint's going to go far when you start spreading it. You can, again, you can come back and erase some of it, but I find it's a little bit easier just to go with these small little dots and strokes versus 
uh, starting out with a whole lot. So just a little bit here and see how much it starts really spreading around. Okay. Now for me, that's a little too mauvish, purplish, whatever. So I'm just going to keep spreading it. And it really kind of starts softening out and almost obliterates that, but it gives me a different uh, look and a different bit of shadow. So I've really got the beginning for some interesting clouds. And if I want, you know, like see how this is kind of going over here, maybe I don't like that. Then all I got to do is just grab the eraser tool and I can come in and kind of clean it up and get rid of some of it. Um, you know, and just, actually let me go over here, here we go. Really softly do it. I have the eraser I'm using, it's just, it's on, I just remembered it was on soft eraser. You can use hard edged or any of these. Kneaded eraser works really great. Soft eraser is fine. And I just kind of softly start fading this back into the clouds so it fits a little better to my shape that's there. Maybe I want to bring this back down a little bit because I don't want as much coming up towards my highlights. Again, just circular motions, that's important and very very light touch if you're using a pressure sensitive uh, tablet so like that switching back to my palette knife to soften even more and there we go i kind of like that a little better it's not as harsh all right so there's the first part for having some nice rain clouds you know and and having some uh really cool kind of looking uh, clouds started out. So the next thing is uh, would be highlights. So if I look here, you know, the opposite of, of purple is going to be yellow on the color wheel. So now the exact opposite is going to be this greenish yellow because I'm in kind of a weird violet color, but I'm going to go right here to this yellowish golden kind of color. And I'm going to come over here where I have a lot of white in it. And so it's kind of this peachy, um, light color. I'm going to grab for this. I'm going to grab my oil brush on everlasting oil. And I got a smaller, a little bit of a smaller brush. And for this, I am thinking about where would the light be hitting it, you know, and, and I'm not drawing a straight line. Okay. You can see I'm breaking it up up here. All right. So, and that's important because it gives you a much more interesting uh, thing and it doesn't, this is what's called the silver lining, you know, silver lining of cloud, but that silver lining phrase can be used really for anything. If you're highlighting a horse's ear or, or just whatever you can do it. So back to the palette knife, same one. I am going to make it a smaller palette knife. And you do this by holding shift and then moving to the left with your cursor and it make, gives you a small one. So why do that? Because I don't want to completely obliterate these. Okay. I'm also going to zoom in and I'll go a little bit deeper zoom than what this would uh, be if I were, um, it'll start getting pixelated basically is what I'm trying to say. So I have these, now these right here, I'll just kind of obliterate because I just want it to be kind of a hint of color. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and come at these from the back of them and kind of like what I did with these clouds. So it'll leave that kind of jagged edge there, but a, a crisper edge and just try to softly hit it from the side and behind to where it starts engaging it and then leave it. Same thing. Just coming in from the back. And kind of hitting that. Now, once I've got that crisp edge, I can just really go to town on this back side of it here and just really soften it out and so forth. But you can see how we start getting some of that paint pushed around and leaving that crisp highlight there.
and I can even come back with a bigger brush in just a second and really kind of soften it out. So again, just uh, hit these. And it does, you can see that it makes it a little bit more, by doing it over top, I'm not interacting with the paint underneath. So I have some of this showing through. You know, that's that's interesting to me. Um, I find that to be a cool thing. Sometimes my strokes get a little too close to each other here on this paint, so I might obliterate the one behind it, but that's okay. It just gives it the idea that light is streaming across it. Okay. So when you do these, it's important to then zoom back out and see how it looks. Okay. Now that's a, that's a bit of a jump in value. So I may want to soften it up a little bit. And I do that by just going with a bigger brush, softening it. And then what I'll do is perhaps come back and do another highlight, which I think I'm going to do because that does jump to being just a bit too quick of a transition from one value to another. So it gives it kind of a weird look. Oh, and I move the canvas, you just push space and drag your cursor. And it moves the canvas for you. All right, I'm going to soften this a little bit more, increase my, and soften it out. Because that was just too quick of a, oops, I kind of liked that one. Too quick of a jump. Like so. And that's better. That's That gives a much more um, soft. So let's do that again and go a little bit lighter. Not Again, not white, but really close. <clears throat> and this time we're going to, again, use the oil brush, the Everlasting Oil. And we're going to be even a little more soft and selective where we're putting this. Go back to my shrunk down palette knife, the exact same circle, come in from the bottom and leave it. Come in from the bottom and leave it. Come over here. I'll zoom out on this in just a second, but I think you're going to really like it. And you can just look for places where there are natural highlights, like so. And then again, circle it in from the bottom. And then leave it. One of the great things about doing this versus breaking out the oil paints or the acrylics is that you just have the freedom because you're not wasting anything. You know, you're not even wasting time if you make a mistake. You're learning something every time you do it. And that's the important part because a lot, of, and by doing it this way, I found that when I paint traditionally, it actually helped. It gave me the ability to make the mistakes here and then not make as many with traditional paints. So it helped quite a bit. All right, so let's zoom back out. And there you go. There's some clouds. Okay, so that's one way to do it. That's the way that I usually uh, did it to begin with when I first started using ArtRage. The way I still do it sometimes, depending on what I want. Um, but that's one way to do it right there. Now, the other way to do it, which I've you've seen in some of my other videos, is to go with the sticker spray and then come into settings. And you can use, honestly, you can use any of these. But I like this Flower Children one. Okay, now... <clears throat> the way that works is, is that the 
it's going to basically just send out versions of white if you have it really close in the value side. So if you go to something in the middle, again, going back to a bluish color and dropping down on the saturation. So let me actually, before I do that, I want to do the same thing. Go back down to a shadow layer. So you kind of have a shadow and a highlight layer is what I just did. Uh, well, really a mid-tone layer and then shadow and highlight layer. You can do the shadows and highlights on different layers if you want to, but I try to paint in less layers. So this will be my foundation for it. So you can see where I'm at here. Now that looks pretty dark. It's not super dark, but it is not as saturated. So that could work. Okay. And what this is going to do is give us some of these automatic tones. So uh, just circling again like this, a little bit of pressure. It randomly throws in... Uh, some of the darks and the lights. If you want to get more darks, you just move it over a little bit further and you'll get some. Now the, the advantage and disadvantage of this, the advantage is that it's kind of taking care of those random spots of highlights and shadows. The disadvantage is it's kind of randomly taking those <laughs> highlights and shadows. So if you're a person that likes control, this probably isn't the technique. You probably want the first one. But if you're somebody that, that struggles to get that um, randomness in your clouds, then this will work for you. Okay, so I've got that laid in there. I'm going to switch back to my palette knife. Again, the exact same one, heavy bullard frosting. I'm going to bring up the little size of it to, uh, you know, roughly about that size, which is 68% here, but it could be bigger than that. And start making the same circles. Okay, again, kind of going from the bottom, working my way up towards that lighter area. And the point of this is just make sure you obliterate those flowers, because the last thing you want are flowers in your clouds. I mean, I would assume that's the last thing you want. I guess that would give you happier clouds. But. All right, so there we go you have a really random cloud. Now, that is, that's a very volatile random cloud. You can see it's not as cotton ball-y as these kind of guys are, but it gives you that nice, uh, just turbulent cloud kind of look, right? And you can play with this from here. Now, what you would do from here is go back to your uh, highlight and shadow layers and then start looking for those highlights and for those shadows and then start kind of refining it. So I'm just going to grab from this one up here and go back to my oil brush and zoom in. So if I'm doing this one, then I would say, okay, here's kind of a spot there, kind of a spot there, kind of a light spot there. Uh, there's another one right here that looks interesting. And then just kind of the same thing with going over that to soften it, making this my mid-tone, almost exactly the same as we did the other, like so. And see, this is actually out past that cloud a little bit, but that's okay. Soften these down just a little bit. Okay. I can do the same for um, going back to the oil brush. Do the same. If you want to just push alt and then you can select the color. So kind of the same. I can see here um, there's some shadows there. If I want to flatten out the cloud a little bit, like I don't want this poofy part here, I can do that by just kind of coming across same kind of thing. I can make some deeper shadows here and there. Back to my palette knife. Circles. Actually, this one will expand just a little bit. Circles. Okay. So start laying that in. It gives me a little bit of a uh, lighter, I mean, a darker shadow going back to this kind of peachy tone, 
grabbing almost white. Back to the oil brush. Again, putting in some highlights. Looking for where those are occurring in here. Looking for, you know, maybe some different places. Back to my palette knife. Bring it down. Circle in from the bottom. Circle in from the bottom. Circle in from the bottom. And just kind of keep repeating the process. And there you start having So you can see it gives you a little bit different look um, for the clouds. And this is kind of a random, more of a random look. This is more of a controlled look. It really kind of depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to go for a super stormy kind of thing, then you can go with this one. You could, I mean, you could get these there too, but um, this works great for if you just have trouble getting clouds that don't look like circles that have highlights. So there's some uh, stormy kind of clouds and kind of look. Okay. And if you wanted to do more of a wispy type cloud, like let's say you wanted to, um, you know, kind of have some of these that come across. Now, when you're doing these kind of clouds, and I can't remember what the name of them are, but it's those really light feathery clouds that come across before these clouds get here. Um, you want to always paint those in perspective and the perspective is going to kind of be like this because they're coming closer to you as they come across. So think about that as you're doing them. And kind of, um, how you want them done. So like is the light coming from the top? Is the light coming from the bottom? You see a lot of these usually around sunsets and stuff. And so it's just kind of a this motion back and forth. Okay. So you can do it that way. Then you can go back to the palette knife. Now this, the same one we've been using doesn't really, it can work. I mean, all I'm doing is just going straight across. So instead of doing circular motion, I'm just going straight across and you can get you know, some nice clouds that way that kind of look like they're fading off into the distance like that. And then just kind of keep working it. And that's, you know, that's not bad. That's, that's a good way to do it. Um, to get a nice look, undo this real quick. Okay. All right. You can also switch to something like your hard out smear or hard out smudge and you see you've got that line in the middle that kind of tells you what direction it's going and you can kind of just lightly go back and forth and it's kind of this curvy banana motion comma motion kind of thing and blend it that way and you get some um, interesting effects just by kind of doing that you can also go to hard out smear and get that feathery effect as well. Now these work great for making those kind of clouds that you're going to come across, say a sunset, but by using those two together, and again, I'm just going back and forth, barely and barely circling. Um, I can get those wispy clouds like that. So you have the options to do it. And that's just using the hard out smear and the hard out smudge. Um, to do so and by putting the dark and the light together to get you kind of that mid tone and then you just come back in same thing you would just add the highlights on the top add a little bit softly smear it add a little bit softly smear it add a little bit softly smear it and then you got to decide is my light hitting more from the top or is it hitting more from the bottom like a sunset and that's how you lay those in okay so that's clouds and uh, a couple different ways to do it so 
If you have questions about clouds, put it in the comments below. All right, so jumping back to these clouds, I took off the other ones that we did here, and I wanted to talk about how you do stuff like sun rays and things like that. So I've got these clouds here, the ones that we just made a little bit ago. I'm going to merge these layers so that I keep the clouds. I'm also going to move the clouds down. So by doing Cont Shift, Control, Alt, T, I get my transform layer. I'm just going to move these down here so we have a little bit more room and then click OK. Now this one will allow you to distort it. This one just keeps it uniform um, and you can flip it horizontal, flip it vertical, rotate, so forth. So I'm not going to worry about that. All right, so I've got some more room here. So let's say that my sunlight is coming from this way and I really want to uh, have some sunlight stream across it or maybe I've got it in a different part of the painting that I want to have it stream across. So how would I do that? Well, first of all, make another layer so that way you're not going to mess up these clouds. And then you get a couple different options for doing this. So you can uh, use just the airbrush. Okay, so let me show you that. So if I go with the airbrush tool and then I want to go with big and subtle and I'm going to Press Alt and grab this lighter color here. And then if I hold push control and then click my um, airbrush button on the mouse or the uh, pen tool, I get this line. So this is going to give me a straight line. Okay. So when I drag it to where I want it, then I let go. I've got a straight line. Okay. I can do it again and kind of widen it out. and then just kind of build it up and then maybe do another one. So there we go. So like, you know, just a, whatever that is, <laughs> it's like the heavens themselves are, are lighting up. So I've got that there. All right. But that's a little too, uh, intense. It's hiding my clouds. It's really kind of giving a, an odd look. And plus it's too, you know, too streaky. You can tell it's there. So let's go back to the palette knife. Let's grab instant blur. Okay. Now then I'm going to increase the palette knife size just a little bit up to about there. Cause I want it to be just a little bit bigger than this control click following the same path that these did more or less. I'm going to let it blur down. I can, so my pressure is all the way up. My softness is all the way up. Okay. And this may take a couple of times of doing it. You can also go the other direction. If you just kind of go take your, if you have a good hand with it, you can just kind of follow it and really soften it by following the direction. So trying to stay in the same overall direction that it was. Just going back and forth. If you have the patience to do it the other way, you can just kind of keep doing the same line. So you keep your line. I don't have the patience for it. So I'm just going to do it by hand. Um, so now I have the, um, light coming across. Okay. And that's not too bad. I mean, it looks, it looks interesting, you know, as far as like lighting it up, there's a couple things you can do here. Let me show you this real quick before I start changing this. So if I go to, to this little icon right here, I can come over and see blend modes. Blend modes are the same thing. You may be familiar from other programs, but things like lighten, uh, multiply and so forth. If I go to overlay, it's going to overlay it over here. Now that you're not going to see a lot there, but it does make a difference for kind of completely uh, highlighting it and coming across. And on some things that it'll, it'll make a big difference, but these clouds are light enough that it's not going to be too much um, of a difference. But anyway, so that's, that's one way you can do it. If you're trying to get some, some really sparkling highlights for it uh, is do that. So <clears throat> let me put this back to normal. For this, there's not enough going on in the background and the clouds to really make a big difference. That's why it's not popping out, but it is a way to do it in the, to see it. So looking at my clouds, this 
is really obliterating this. So maybe I wanted to lighten it a little, you know, uh, soften a little bit. I can reduce the opacity on my layer just right here. And all I'm doing is clicking and pulling down and it changes the opacity dial right there. So if I look at that and let's kind of zoom out a little bit softer, a little bit more subtle, really depends on what you're going for. Uh, and, and that kind of thing. But let's do this too. Let's give this a little bit more dimension. So let's go back to the eraser. I am going to keep the soft erase because I do want that softness to it. And let's say I really want to have it so that this cloud is maybe interfering with that light. You know, maybe it's casting, you know, a shadow. So I can kind of keep some of it going across and some of it not. Now I've given it dimension. So look, see, it's going past shadow of this cloud, hits this cloud and goes across. So I have some, some interesting look there now with it. Okay, so that's a way to get just kind of a subtle sunbeam kind of thing. I can soften this out a little more if I want, just using the soft eraser um, and kind of going that way. Now, if this, if I think this is too much, like too stark of a line or whatever, I can come up to edit and I can go down to filters and blur layer or also control B. And then I can soften it. So you see how that softened because it's already four picks of uh, blur radius. But maybe I just, so we'll start at zero. And then we'll come up just a little bit, maybe two. And tell it okay. So it's it, it made it much more subtle. Okay, so kind of a before, after. All right, so see it's much more subtle. Kind of a look to it. All right. So that's a great way to get that sunlight streaking across. You can also, let me show you another quick thing you can do. So I want to create a layer underneath these clouds. And um, I want to maybe make it look like it's raining underneath these clouds. And so the same kind of thing, go to the airbrush. We're going to select from the clouds here, this kind of uh, darkish blue gray color and just start pulling underneath like so and then we can go a little bit darker up towards where the clouds themselves are and now I have you know, some rain coming down. I can go back to my eraser. If I want to make these really crisp, I can, which a lot of times you'll see that with rain as it's coming down, it has a very distinctive edge. And kind of break it up a little bit. So now I've got rain coming down um you know but maybe i'm like oh that kind of matches that sunlight too much maybe i don't like it so i can come back to transform layer contents and let's rotate it ever so slightly and you see this changes right here And again, this is why I like digital because I can move stuff around. I'm going to go to this one and kind of play around with the placement, stretching it, tweaking it. Um, maybe flipping it horizontal. Maybe I want to add that extra kind of cool thing that the rains go in the opposite direction, like the clouds are pushing from the left to the right. So I can play around with that and my composition. Oops.
So now that's a little more interesting because now you got the sunlight coming one direct direction, you've got the rain going the opposite direction. It can add interest, basically, is what I'm saying. So get that kind of layered in there. Maybe it's, I'm thinking, well, it's a little too dark. Maybe I'll lighten it up a little bit, like so. Maybe I'll take my palette knife and still on blur and kind of blur it out a little bit, like so. So, you know, and, but then, you know, you can also do things like duplicate the layer and then set the layer blend mode to um, multiply. And then you can kind of go in with the eraser and randomly add a little bit more interest by erasing some of it, blurring some of it, playing around with it, whatever. You know, um, the point is that you can kind of get some really cool effects with doing this and messing around and so that we can do it. So that's, that's how you do sun rays. That's how you could do, um, rain. You could also go back to the clouds themselves, uh, and soften that bottom edge. So it blends in a little bit more to that lower edge of the rain, like so. And so now it looks a little bit more like rain coming down. All right, so there we go. Kind of an interesting thing. So there's some sunlights and there's some uh, rain. That's how you would do those effects. Okay, questions about it, comments, uh, let me know in the comments below. Thanks. Okay, so since we're doing clouds and rain and sunlight and stuff we need to have a rainbow or at least that's mainly because somebody asked me how do you do a rainbow <laughs> so a new layer is what you're going to need to start with and now there's a couple different ways you can do this uh you know you could make the rainbow just go roy g biv you know red orange yellow green blue indigo violet and go across there and do it you could also save a lot of time and make your life simple if you come over to the sticker spray go to presets fun brushes scroll down there's a rainbow brush right there so you click that one and then you come up here now you're going to want to think about <clears throat> kind of the rough size that you want so make your brush just a little bit bigger um, and my computer's lagging some of these brushes will cause for me causes my computer to lag a little bit especially when i'm recording so I've got my rainbow brush. I'm on a new layer because again, I don't want to affect these layers here. And I am going to transform this a little bit. Think about you, you want to get that curve. Okay. Kind of the basics for the curve that you want. So you can come in here and change your settings so that your spray rate is all the way auto flatten, variation symmetry, all that kind of stuff. Just, you know, basically you leave this. The main thing you want is just your spray rate. Make sure your spray rate's all the way. I'm going to do an arc. Okay. And I'm just going to push as much pressure as I can. Come down. It is always going to do that on the end. Okay. That's fine. We're not going to worry about that. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So the first thing is obviously way too strong. <laughs> so we want to reduce this down. Now I find that if you can reduce this down to where it's just a hint, that's what you need. You can even click on the opacity here and drop it down to like maybe 7%. Okay. Very soft, very subtle. You can always come back up. That's why I do it this way instead of trying to play around with the spray variation. Then I'm going to, uh, transform it. So control alt shift T gives you the transform. I'm on uniform. I'm going to bring it down. So if my sunlight and all that was here, then my rainbow would probably be somewhere around here. Grabbing this middle one and pulling up, that's going to transform my arc quite a bit. So there, and maybe play around and sh change the shape a little bit like so. And let's turn it ever so slightly like so. So see those ends are gone now. I don't have to worry about those ends and save. So coming back to my palette knife, going with instant blur still and keeping a large brush. So it's bigger than this one. Okay. What I'm going to do now, let me get rid of this is I'm going to follow this same with just one stroke 
like so, and then one stroke again, going back the other way on the bottom. So it almost obliterates it. But if that's too much, you can always bring it back somewhat on here with your layer opacity. So, uh, but again, I find having it just be a subtle, like maybe 10% at the most is plenty, 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 plenty. And then I can put it wherever I want now. So like, for example, if I wanted to put, move it over a little bit, maybe down, I could do that. If you decided you wanted to like, say you wanted to move it somewhere else, like, you know, just for whatever reason you wanted it right up here, front and center kind of thing. You know, maybe, I don't know why you would do it like this, but let's just say you were doing it like this. Okay. Um, you could do so and let it kind of play across the clouds. I would change this to uh, blend mode to overlay because then it really does interact with what's behind it. And if you change the opacity like so, so let's say you wanted, yeah, you wanted to do this really bright rainbow like that. Well, you've now got these corners here. So all you do is just come back. You can do a couple things. One, you can keep your blur brush and just kind of go the direction of the rainbow and soften it like so. You could also use a soft eraser and erase it. Okay. So now you've got a rainbow coming through. You have your clouds. Its overlay is affecting the cloud underneath it and giving you kind of a really cool thing. You, you could make this smaller and put it like, so if it was just kind of here in the cloud, that would look cool. Um, but now you've got, you know, you've got a rainbow for doing it, but that's how you do. That's the super easy. Oh my gosh, way. Why didn't I ever do this before way of doing it? Some programs I have, I don't, don't have this brush. So I have to go red, orange, yellow, and so forth to make my rainbow. And then I have to transform that with the warp tool or with, you know, or just do the strokes themselves or duplicate, adjust the hue and so on. But anyway, this makes it super easy. So you can get that nice, cool looking rainbow effect with this just by doing that and then place it wherever you want. Obviously, wherever you place it is going to change how it looks. You know, if it's up here, that seems to match because the we've got the sunlight and everything. Down here, it's super bright because it's against a dark setting. So, you know, however you want to do it, you can do it. You could even, like I said, if you wanted it to be in the clouds, you could just put it right there in the clouds. And you have a nice, soft, rainbow effect that you just can obliterate. Okay. All right. So hopefully that helps. That's how you make a quick rainbow effect and contort it to look right and everything else. Again, got any questions? Leave it below.